a miracle is coming your way, and today is your day. We are exploring the possibilities and examining the opportunities that are before us, and we are expecting good things to happen to you from God today. Just think, one idea from heaven can change your life. I believe you'll receive that idea today, so stay tuned as we communicate on the newest book that I've written called River and Rain about living the prosperous life, expecting the finances of heaven, the resources of God, the blessings of the kingdom of God to come into your life. I believe it's his will, but how do we receive it? These are important questions as we discover the truths that are in this book that are transforming Russia, Eurasia, and the world. It is now written in Japanese, Russian, in Spanish, in French, and in English, Estonian, and Norway. So, today, as we explore these truths, open up your heart and say, what's good for God is good for me. What's good for people is also good for me. We're looking at the life principles, the foundations, the precepts that guide finances, that guide prosperity. Does God want us to prosper? That's a big question. We can discover that. I believe that there's a better way than the way that we're living right now. Just getting by, just hoping, just praying, not knowing. I believe that God has a better way for us and for you. First, I think we need to find our place of abundance. That God has given and made a place of prosperity for you. There is a place in this world where you can grow, where you can increase. After all, when you look at nature, you see that everything created multiplies. It is not just added, but it's multiplied. Look at an apple tree. Look how many apples it produces. Look how many seeds are in every apple. Look at a wheat. They say that just one stalk of wheat, if left to produce on its own, would feed half the world if it was in perfect conditions in three years. So, think about it. Think about all the abundance and the increase and the and the overflow that God has built into this world. How come your life is struggling? How come you feel shortage? How come if everything is designed to grow, you are feeling hindered or pulled back? It's not God. It's not God's will. God has designed you to increase, and today you can begin. Why? Because God says that we can be like a tree planted by the river. Yeah, there are lots of trees, but if you ever have lived in the desert or near in the arid areas of the world where there's not a lot of rain, and you see that if the rain doesn't come, the grass dries up, the trees wither. But in that same territory, the trees that are living by the streams, that are living by the rivers, those trees continue to produce beautiful leaves and fruit. Why? Because they are a tree planted by the river. And that's what God says are the, is the inheritance or the right of his children. He calls up us Trees of righteousness planted by the rivers of life. What does that mean? There is a river. Jesus said there is a river that will flow out of you. An abundance that will flow out of you. Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and that life abundant. He's put a river. He's put the spirit within you. He said that that spirit will flow out of you. Overflow more than enough. He wants you to experience more than enough in life. Not just get by life, not just struggle life, not just enough life, but more than enough. I remember when Moses, the story of Moses taking the children of Israel to the promised land and how they by, by they doubted and they couldn't enter in. They were afraid of the giants and the cities. So Moses had to wait 40 more years until that generation of doubters died off. And then a new generation of children rose up and they came to the edge of the promised land again. And as they were about to cross the day before, two of the tribes said to Moses, Moses, 
This is a land right here that's beautiful. This is a land with grass. This is a land for cattle. And we have cattle. Moses, we don't want to cross over the Jordan. You know, a lot of people are like that. God has given them a promised land. God has given them more. God has wanted and intended a greater blessing for them. But they say, this is good enough. Sausage and cheese, sausage and bread, that's good enough. But God says, no, that's not what I intended. I had more planned for you. I didn't create this whole world for you just to struggle and die. No, I have more than heaven. I have a life on earth. Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and that life abundant. We are to rule and reign in this life through Jesus Christ, not just get by. Wow. So we need to find the bridge to this. We need to discover what will cross over to that side from poverty to riches, from struggle to overflow, from lack to abundance. What is the bridge that takes us from having little to having a full life, from being dissatisfied to being complete and happy? What is that? Where is that bridge? And that's important for you to discover. You can have a river and, and rain life. What do I mean by that? I mean, you can live by the river so that even in tough times, times change, people change, religions change, but God's word never changes. So when things change, you can be stable and secure. You can have a river and rain. What's rain? Rain is an abundance. Rains when the cloud fills up and the clouds pour down. Rain is miracles. Rain is suddenly, suddenly you get an answer. Suddenly, you have favor with your boss. Suddenly, a new idea is given to you and you reach out and it produces new wealth. Suddenly, you have a new friend and that friend brings favor into your life. Yeah, there's a river life and a rain life. You can have both, a river and rain life. You don't have to live just from paycheck to paycheck. You don't have to live just making ends meet. You don't have to wait until sickness or some catastrophe steals your abundance or steals what you had in the bank. Oh, you know, it's terrible what happened when the banks locked up in Russia and the people lost the money that was in the bank and they couldn't get it back. You don't have to live just by what's in the bank because you've got a river of life. You've got a kingdom within you. You have an, a source that man cannot touch. You have riches that men cannot steal. Praise be to God. Isn't it wonderful to know that you have these things? The better way is available for you. We are going to discover that. We're going to explore. We're going to experience. And we're going to receive that better way. It's accessible. And it's designed for you to walk in it. But you must walk in it by faith. First, you must understand it. Then you must pursue it desire it, go after it, and not quit until you get that life which God has designed for you. Jesus said this, to those who have shall more be given, but to those who have not, even what they have will be taken away. Think about that. Jesus is not like government welfare. He's not saying to those who do not have, I'm going to provide. No, he said to those who have, shall more be given. Well, that's strange. If you're rich, he says, you'll be richer. Well, that's strange for God to say that. But he's saying to those, he was talking about the people with talents. People with talents, he gave one ten talents, one five talents, one one talent. Each talent was about 20 uh, pounds of gold. And uh, so what they did determined what they received. The one with 20 talents went and multiplied and made 20 more. The one with five talents went and multiplied and made five more. But the one with one talent, he buried it in the ground. And he was afraid. When the master came back, the master said, well, let's give an account. What did you do? So he said to the one with 20, oh, you've done well. 
He said, enter into my abundance. The one with five, he said, you done well. Enter into my abundance. But the one with one, he said, where is my one? Where is my talents? Where is the increase? And he said, I was afraid and I hid it. I buried it in the ground. Have you buried the talent of God? Have you buried the resources of God? Have you buried the gifts of God? Have you buried what God has given you? Don't bury it. Multiply it. He said, you should have at least, you should have at least given it to the bank where you could get an increase. In other words, even the minimum you should have gone after, even a little interest, maybe 4%, you could have gone after if you gave it to the bank, but you buried it completely. All you have is the one talent. Now, God says to those who have shall more be given, but those who have not, even what they have will be taken away. You don't want your gifts, your, your riches taken away. No, they are designed for increase. Do something with them. Do something with what you have. Use what you have. When Moses was at the Red Sea, he was afraid. He started to pray. And he said, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. God said to him, use what you have. You have a rod. Stretch forth your rod over the sea and it shall part. Folks, I don't know what you have in your work, in your house. I don't know what you have in your pocket. I don't know what you have in your purse. I don't know what you have in your life. But use what you have with God's blessing. It will increase and multiply. And you will begin to experience the increase that you were designed for. Praise God. First, what do you have that makes you rich? What is the first thing that you have from God? I tell you, you have... Uh, you have something far more valuable than any silver or gold, for you have righteousness. The Bible says that he has become unrighteous and he has made us the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Wow, that's a powerful saying. You have to believe in yourself. Believe in what God's done for you. Believe that you are right with God. Therefore, you are not uh, a slave of people. You are not bound to people. You don't have to care what people think about you if God thinks only good thoughts towards you. So today, as we lift up our voice, now with me, lift up your voice and say, I am the righteousness of God. I am an ambassador of Christ. I am an able person, communicator of good things. I have good things within me. I have something that can increase. Say it with me. Believe it with me. Believe in yourself. Believe in your God. Believe in your words. Believe in people. And that is the start for a great life, a river and rain life. God bless you. We are talking about what produces a prosperous life. I think that God intended all of us to be prosperous, but there is a way to walk in that. And we have, we have to start somewhere. Listen, Jesus started in a manger, but you know what? Jesus did not stay there. So get busy. You start somewhere. It might be in a small village. You might not have a car, but you know what? You can believe God for a bicycle. You might not have uh, a big steak, but you know what? You can believe God for a loaf of bread. You might not have uh, a, a lot of things, but you know what? You can believe, you might not have an education, but you know what? You can believe God for a book. You can get started somewhere. God can begin to work with you and you can begin your journey of prosperity and increase. You know, it might be an obscure place, but don't be worried. The Savior of the world has decided to be with you. If you call on his name, he's decided to live in you. He's decided to make your home, your body, his home. So you and him are a dynamic team. You can work together and increase in this world. His intention for creation has not changed. When he created Adam and Eve, he put them into a garden. He told them to tend the garden and have rule and dominion over all the fish of the sea and over all the animals of the earth. And uh, so he gave Adam and Eve great dignity. They were to rule and reign. He put his glory upon them. And then he put them in a place of abundance. They were not sweating. They were not struggling to eat and to survive. They had an abundance all around them that was growing up, that was for them. And that's God made man in his image like him. So that's the way his intention for man has not changed. The earth has changed. Sin came into this world. 
And with sin came destruction. And with that destruction came man living by the sweat of his brow, came difficulties, came famine, came unusual weather, came struggles and floods, which made things very difficult for man. But you know what? God's intention for us has not changed from when he created man. He created Adam and Eve in the garden, full of peace, full of abundance, full of prosperity. And all that man and women could ever need was put around him. And then he gave him dignity and glory and ability to rule and to reign in that garden. And with that ability, he gave them this uh, confidence that wherever they go, the only place they could not eat was of the tree, the apple tree, that God said do not eat. But because of sin, because they disobeyed God, that, that sin brought calamity into this world, and hardship followed, floods followed, uh, destruction followed, famines and deserts followed. And so life became difficult for man and woman. But when the Spirit of God, through Christ, came back into man, the intention of God also came back, that man could live with increase, abundance, and provision all the days of his life. He does not have to live in obscurity, but you can begin to live a better life. Isn't that wonderful news? I believe it is. I believe it's for you and for me and for all people who will follow Christ. The first step to a house that is on a rock, the first step to a house on the river is avoiding avoiding the counsel of the ungodly. You know, listen to what the Word of God says about that. He said, Oh, the joys of those who do not follow evil men's advice, who do not hang around with sinners scoffing at the things of God. Now listen, if the friends that you pick are critical of you, critical of people, and critical of God, then you will become critical. Watch out who you hang with. Who are your friends? Who are you listening to? Because their words will begin to influence you and you will begin to take on their nature. Watch out. Listen to what the Word of God says. But those who delight in doing everything that God wants them to do, on His laws do they think and meditate, and on His ways to follow Him more closely, they are like trees along the river bank, bearing luscious fruit every, every season. Listen, when we follow the ways of God, it's not just good times and bad times. It's not just happy days and sad days, but it's life by the river. It's every season experiencing good fruit. Their leaves shall not wither, and all they do shall prosper. Wow, think about that. The Bible tells us that God has given us the power to produce wealth. We are not beggars. We are not poor. We are not trying to get wealthy. We are not trying to manipulate people. But God said, He has put within you and me the power to gain wealth. Wow, there's a power to be born again. There's a power to go to heaven. There's a power to know God. There's a power to be healed. There's a power to heal others. And there's a power to gain wealth that comes from heaven, comes from the Spirit, and enters us. Are there examples of this? Absolutely. We can find scripture examples of people who followed God and prospered supernaturally. Prosperity is a choice. The first choice you make is to continually prosper by allowing the right people into your life. And when you do that, you begin to experience elevated thoughts, higher thoughts. Don't let poor-minded people control your life. Who are the ungodly? Who are the ones you should avoid? You should avoid those who have no moral code or no fear of God. Because they have no fear of God, they manipulate everything they do and they say, it's okay, it's okay. In other words, they make the rules as they go along. 
In other words, they have no eternal perspective. They do not care if they go to hell or heaven, and they will take you with them. Their only guidance is what please, pleases them and gives them advantage. Avoid those people. Those people will lead you to destruction. They will offer you an easy way. They will say you can make money quick. You can make, you can get rich quick. But the way that they do it will lead you to destruction. You will lose your guidance system. You will lose your standard. You will lose your direction. Just like in, in the sea and on the ocean, a sailor if all the clouds are dark, if, if it's too hard to, to navigate, they can always look at the North Star and find out where they are. The North Star is consistent, and that keeps them consistent on the seas. For those who have time, there's a, everybody has different time. There's a time in London. There's a time in Moscow. There's a time in New York. There's a time in, in Sao Paulo. There are different times all over the world. Well, whose time is right? Well, there's a standard time, an international time zone. There's a standard time, and everybody sets their clock by the international Greenwich standard time. And because of that, that standard, we all can know what time it is. And so it is. God has given us a word that we all can know what it is that we should be following who it is we should follow, and avoid bad company, avoid bad advice. Wonderful. You know, th there are examples today in our world of people who have done the right thing for the right reason, and then they got the right results. They avoided bad company. And that's what I wanted to make sure that you know, that the first step towards prosperity is to avoid bad advice. I have a friend who, uh, when we, when he started off, I was teaching him tennis and he was, um, uh, working at a company and selling products and they were, they were in a good company, a multi-million dollar company. And his boss said, listen, I want you to make more money, but I want you to cheat the other employees, take some off of theirs, skim some from them, and then give me some, you take some, and you will be a millionaire the first year. So he came to me and he said, uh, what should I do, Kevin? Here's an opportunity to become a millionaire. What do you think I should do? I said, well, I said, the Bible says this, the integrity of the upright shall guide them. But the perverseness of transgressors will destroy them. I said, if you lead a perverse or a twisted way of life, if you manipulate people to your own advantage, it will destroy you. But if you are keep integrity and know and to do what's right, it will prosper you. Well, he decided not to take the advice of his boss. And his boss fired him. Yeah. So he looked at me and he said, Kevin, my boss has fired me. I said, what are you going to do? He says, I'm going to start over in my basement. So he went into his basement selling the parts that he was selling before. And uh, it's very difficult starting all over without any support, without any vehicle, without any salary in your basement. But an amazing thing happened. Within 30 days, the IRS, that is the Internal Revenue Service of America, put his boss in jail. And so all the customers that were going to that corporation now were looking for new parts from a new person. And he was available and he became a multimillionaire. Wow. How is that possible? He did the right thing for the right reason at the right time. And God gave him great results. And now he's become a blessing to many people. So as you consider your ways, as you Think about your friends. You decide, who do I want to listen to? God told Joshua to meditate in his word day and night, and then he shall be prosperous in all that he does. You're going to be doing something with your life. You're going to be putting your hands to something. You want to increase and improve.
meditate, get God's idea, think about it, and act on it, and God will increase you. Pray this with me. Lord Jesus, today I make a decision. That's right. Lift your voice and pray it with me. I make a decision to let go of the old friends that criticize, that hate you, that cheat, that lie, and that are perverse. And I will follow godly counsel from this day forward. In Jesus' name, amen.